All right, ladies, welcome to another Self-Love Conversations. My name is Gloria Ward. We just going to go ahead and get started here. Um, the topic that we have tonight is it, it should be juicy. I want I want you to get your pen and paper because this is something we talk about all the time for our ladies who uh, need to figure out how to heal from it, how to go through it, and how to start it, right? And we got the lady just for that, Miss Renee Mundy of the Dear John the Box. And we are going to talk about how to support your friends post-divorce. Now that's 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 a topic that we need to talk about. Miss Renee, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. I, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So we're just gonna jump right in. Uh, divorce is hard. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh yes. Oh yes, it is. Um, been working with this population for over ten years, and um, I have an affinity for it. I've been through a divorce myself, and so um, I know firsthand some of the peaks and valleys that a lot of women experience um, go, while going through it. And um, it's it's definitely um, can be trying, but there's lots of triumphs and um, lots of victories that can come out of it. You know, the, the biggest thing, because I've, I've been through a divorce too. Uh, I, think the, I think the biggest thing is when it comes to friendships and going through it, you know, you, you want that period where you want some space, right? Because everybody really doesn't know what's going on in your home. And the last thing that you want is someone to give a bad opinion <laughs> about what it is that you're going through from a person that you love, like a friend, right? So if you are going through that hard time and they say, well, girl, I knew he ain't, he wasn't sh anyway. I already told you that. And you like, damn, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, are you focusing on, on me? me or even what? Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Like, are you listening? So feel any worse than I feel right now. Please pour it on and make me. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah, I, I know what you mean. But being that friend, how do you actually support, like give real support? Yeah. If a person feels heard, feels like they're comforted. And feels like they're really supported. Yeah, you said something because um, I, I think I was really blessed with a bouquet of friends. I had different types of friends when I was going through my divorce. And um, I loved it. I thought it, at the time it worked because I had a chance to kind of um, get a full gamut of advice and a full gamut of reactions, you know, um, to what I was going through. And some of them were really helpful. And some of them were like, oh my goodness, I can't, I can't feel any words. Like you just said, some, some of them really poured it on, you know? Um, and I think friends, they have a re really unique place in the divorce recovery process. Yeah. Um, just a side note, Recent studies have shown that, you know, it's, 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 it's more than just what you and I've gone through. More than 50% of women who go through divorces pull, drop to their friends before therapy, you know, and so, and, and a lot of them prefer their friends versus therapy. And so um, I kind of saw the value of seeing a therapist, but I also had a really good, strong set of friends. Um, and I don't down either route. I think whatever works for you is the way to go. And if you're in the friendship seat, be, be very, very, very appreciative that somebody is coming to you um, in that very vulnerable time. Um, but with that, with that being said, a lot of friends don't know how to handle and really help their friends cope with divorce. It's a very deep subject. It's very heavy. A lot of times friends have, you know, relationships with the ex are the ex's families, lots of commingling happening there. So it's a lot of unpackaging when you're a friend sitting on the sideline. But of course, you know, you feel like there's some allegiance to the person that you're friends with. Yeah. Uh, so it's 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 definitely a unique seat, but feel very, very privileged and honored that someone is sharing that piece of their world with you. Because on the flip side, a lot of women will hold in 
you know, um, the pain and a lot of the, the agony that comes with it and it leads to isolation. Um, and, and that's just not a place where we want our friends to be. Yeah, so, and, I, and I think the, the biggest thing is, you know, your life is changing, right? Yes. And even though it's, it's something that's probably been a long time coming or probably something you were surprised with, right? Or something that you ignored and is finally here. However, you know, that works out for you. It's still traumatic because immediately, I know for myself, you're thinking about where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do, you know, do I have enough money? Am I going to be able to, you know, start my life over? What is that going to look like? Right. And uh, I know for me, I had that great support system as well, because, you know, it was more like, okay, glow, you know, we're here for you, whatever it is that you need. And it was great, but I still, Renee, went through this period where I acted out, right? And I didn't want them to tell me good things. I wanted to be out there. I wanted to go out and do crazy things, right? And some of my, <laughs> and some of my friends, would say, well, you know, Glow, I mean, you know, I mean, we're here to support you, whatever it is that you need, even when I was acting out. How important is that? Because I feel in my case, I don't know, they held a space for me to tell me the truth, but then held that space for me to act out, right? And and even with the acting out, they would tell me what I needed to hear. But in that part, I didn't want to listen. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And you said something really good. And that's that when we're when we're hurting, we will reach out to friends for different reasons. And and I think one of the things that I tell friends that are comforting someone through divorce and breakup is that, you know, um, a, think about how you would want somebody to treat you when you're going through it. Mm -hmm. And I know that that sounds a little bit odd, but but it does really make sense because the your friend has sought you out because of your qualities, you know, um, your strong personality or, what, or, or, or maybe your meekness or maybe your wisdom on certain topics. You know, they, they've chose you into their inner circle for a reason. And I think it's a very precious place to be but at the same time, um, you can keep those virtues, but you also need to curtail them just a little bit or tailor it just a little to meet your friend's needs. And sometimes that's not easy. Um, you said something good about at the time when, you, when we're hurting, and I was, I've been there too. I'm nodding like, yes, I've been there where um, I just wanted to vent you know, uh, when I was talking to someone and I didn't really want them to interject a whole lot because I had some strong sister friends in my right. circle at the time and, they, and they, they could lay it out, you know, like really lay it out quick. But for me, it was really important for them to know that, hey, Glo, I just want you to listen right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm hurting, I just need you to listen. Right. You know, I know you got all the wisdom, you got a bags of wisdom, you can pull it out whip it out real fast and you're good at it, but I just need you to listen right now. Um, and that's the seat that friendships have to have to take sometimes. And in all of our wisdom and all of our greatness, we have to be able to switch into those roles that our friends need us to be in. It doesn't make us different or makes you uh, any less than or, or more than what you are. It just means you're just kind of um, being that person that that person needs you to be at that time. Right. It's and not always easy. And it's not because even yeah. when you're on the other side of the coin, when you are the friend, it gets draining. Yes. <laughs> let, let me smile. Like, yes. yes. It gets so, draining because, you know, um, oh, here's Sheila calling. I know she want to talk, right? And then you're saying to yourself, well, she's going through a hard time right now. Let me go ahead and hit the client. I'll call her when I'm in the car because I got that ride home, right? Or 
you know, I'll go sit with her on Saturday <laughs> and mm-hmm. just make sure she's okay. Right. Yeah. How do just read a few texts every now and again and see if she's all right. But you know, mm-hmm. hey, I'm not gonna, you know, does, I can't right now. Friend, I can't, you know, how does a friend like take that. care of herself while in this thing with the friend who's hurting? Because that stuff is absorbed, right? Mm-hmm. Where you feel like being a friend is giving all your time, making sure you're there. You know, sometimes that it compete on your household and your family and your kids and 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 cause conflict because, right? Oh, yeah. You're trying to be a good friend. So what are the boundaries that you have to have? Absolutely. Um, that's also important. So not only are you checking in to say, hey, what what how do you want me to show up for you right now? Is it that you want me to listen or do you want me to interject and give my perspective, right? Because as a French, you know, we are able to do both, but at, but we're catering to the needs of our friend that is hurting. Um, but there are signs that our giving, our taking, our receiving can become toxic. And you're right. It can be times when um, our own energy and our own well-being, you know, can be um, can be threatened by somebody else's, you know, um, negativity, you know, because let's just face it, when, when when people are hurting and they're not making movements to change, you know, making making forward movements to change, mm-hmm. it can become toxic and it can become what, I, what I'd call a, ne- a tornado of negativity. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm speaking from firsthand experience. Um, um, but before I go there, definitely before you dismiss the person, and this is a therapist speaking from me, in me, that you want to check in and make sure there's no no mention of self harm and, and harming others, you know. So as much as we may want to bail and, and and put walls up, you know, and we do have to cr- protect our peace, um, you want to make sure that there is, you know, that that if there is mention of harm, you know, to themselves or or anyone else, that you want to perk up. And there there's crisis lines that are out there, um, suicide crisis lines um, that is out there and of course local police that can help you and assist you with being um, a a resource in those situations. Um, But definitely you don't wanna take those lightly. Um, You want to perk up and and be responsive in that situation. However, if it's not that, you know, I would say- (laughs) However, (laughs) if it's not any of those heavy- Real toxic. (laughs) Right, real fast, right? But if it's not that, you know, I would say yes. It's, it's definitely some some boundaries that need to be put in place and enforced. Um, and, and don't feel bad about that. Um, I've been on both sides of the coin. Um, I'm not a professional that's just too high or too too proud to admit. I've been on both sides of the coin. When I was going through my divorce, I did have a very good friend um, to say, hey, you know, I, I think we're, you're not making progress in this situation, you know, and I'm going to have to step back, you know, for my well-being. And I've been also been somebody that has been supportive of someone that I've had to say that to. So I've been on both sides of the coin, uh, and um, I feel like there is there is a lot of um, strength and courage in saying those types of, of of real things to a friend who's hurting. Um, I think at the time when I had a very good friend say, hey, I, I have to step back from my own well-being because you're not making some progress towards your you know, wellness or getting better or getting out of this toxic situation that you're living in um, or be, and making choices to stay in. Um, at the time, it hurt. It hurt like somebody ripping a Band-Aid off. Mm-hmm. But guess what? Baby, hey, I got it together. A few okay. weeks later, <laughs> you know, I was out of that situation a few weeks later. That was the, that was the propel that I needed, you know, to get up out of that. And I want to say that, you know, that sometimes that's where life takes us. Yeah. Um, and, and I want to encourage anyone who is a friend right now, who is really struggling with making that choice between their own well-being and, um, you know, trying to save a friend, A, know that people tr- make their own choices and their own destiny, you know, it's, it's, it's on them, the onus is on them. And this is outside of abuse, right? This is outside of someone being abused or self-harm. But other than that, 
relationships take two people, you know, normally, and there's, there's lessons to be learned on both sides. And there's progress that people need to take um, and take ownership of to make themselves uh, move forward in life. And that's not something that you can take on as a friend. Um, so there are boundaries that you have to keep in your own well-beings uh, that you need to protect. And uh, I wanna encourage you to do that. Um, I had someone say that to me and it was the life, most life-changing thing that, that has happened um, in my realm of friendships. And at the time it hurt, but it's kind of, it kind of hurt like when your mom or your parent, you know, said, exactly. hey, no more peanut butter and jelly because you didn't clean your room, you know? Right. It was, it's kind of like that because when we had the conversation, I, I immediately agreed with her. I understood where she was coming from. Um, I wasn't blindsided by the situation. Um, I understood where she was coming from. I said, okay, I respect that. It hurt, but I, I understood it. Um, and it propelled me to make changes in my life, you know, that have made me um, change for the better. Yeah, that was that was the the words you needed to finally, you know, say to yourself, I need to stop being the victim. I, it's going to be what it's going to be. And I need to figure out what life is going to be now. And I need to spend my time thinking about and planning what that's going to be and how that's going to look for myself. If you got kids, your kids. And how are you going to navigate that to get out the situation that you're in, right? Because we are so blinded by the hurt and the betrayal and the, and the, and the pain that you really don't focus on all these things. And when you do, it, let's say one day you're feeling good and you know the you got to put the sign out on the yard, man, because it's time to go ahead and sell the house right? And that just spiral you down and you call in a friend like, girl, I just put the sign out. <laughs> right? Yes. I just put the sign out. So I guess it's really real. And this it's is real. what it is, yes. right? The, the, right? The aspect, the, the friendship aspect is, is being that person that says to remind the person who's going through of who they are. You're there to remind the person of who they are so that they can who realize, they can yeah, so that they can realize that that they're a stronger than what they in, and but it's okay to go ahead and feel the way you feel. You're not ignoring your feelings, but while you're feeling it, you got to make some steps towards something. That's right. Right. That's right. Um, it, it's definitely, um, sometimes a lot easier said than done and you know yeah. in your head you'll play things out another note too is well I know you've probably been there too where we say hey um I want to be there for my friend and your friend asks you to do something that's just like you're like hey how can I be there how can I show up for you and they ask you to do something that's just totally out outlandish you know or something that's that that you weren't expecting I don't or don't agree with doing. Um, and I've I've heard that a lot from people who are friends with um people that are hurting and going through divorces and things. Um I've I've spoken to both friends and one friend would say, or the friend that the supporting friend would say, Hey, you know, I was trying to show up for, for this person, but I couldn't believe she asked me to do so and so. You know, I would never do that. I've never done that. That's not me. Da, da, da. And I and and as a result. I'll wash my hands of it. I'm not talking to her anymore or him anymore. Um, and, it, it, and it's caused a stumble in their friendship. Um, more times than not, I'm not saying all the time, but more times than not, when people make requests of you uh, when they're hurting, um, it, it, it's usually not coming from a space that they're, that they're accustomed to. Um, so you have to equip yourself for the ask. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, I definitely want to, to leave audiences the audience with that information too because as a friend you got to kind of equip yourself you're going to be asked some things right we want to show up show up show up and that's the right thing to that's the right space to be in but it happens when when you don't agree with what you're being asked to do yeah I, I would say <laughs> 
having someone who has young kids going through a divorce and they need help now picking the kids up from school and making sure they have this because they got to work late and they have a lot of stuff. And now you relying on your friends and your network and even your family to go ahead and be that replacement. And they are not, right? They're not used to doing that or having that and they're being there for you. But at the same time, they're suppressing their feelings about how they feel. Whereas like, I really don't wanna do this. Like, I really don't wanna pick up your kids. I really don't wanna have your kids at my house again. I remember I could tell you a story. My friend, my one of my best friends, uh, Renee, I, the marriage, our washing machine um, wasn't working correctly, right? Mm -hmm. And so I refused to go ahead and get it fixed because like we're breaking up anyway. So I'm not getting shit fixed, okay? I hear you. And I hear you. If, if you want it, you know, that's what it was. I'm taking my stuff to my friend's house and I would wash my clothes at my friend's house, right? So I would go over there like every other Sunday to go do it. And, you know, we would just sit and talk. I wash my clothes and all that. And I would always thank her and, you know, and, and give her something or she would never take it. And then all of a sudden, I, I noticed that when I would call and say, oh, I'm on my way. She like, oh, I went out of town. Right. <laughs> or she would say, oh, well, I decided to go to the movies. And I said to myself, I said. I said. Okay. And I hung up the phone, but I knew that wasn't like her. Right. right. So she called me back and she says, no, I'm not going out of town. I just don't want you to come. <laughs> I said, Why are you just... And she said, you know, I know you're going through a hard time and everything, but I like my space on Sunday. It's my time to wash my clothes, do my thing. And Gloria, I just gotta tell you, you probably just need to take your shit to the uh to the laundry. And that's exactly what I did. Right? Because you know, you don't know that you're really eating up their time and doing stuff where you have to be able to be vocal and you have to be able to be out there, you know, to to say something. So my other question to you is, is why did you choose this line of work? It's, it's, it's a number one, I've been through the divorce myself. Um, in fact, uh, when I was studying to become a counselor, I was going through my divorce at the same time. And um, at, at, in the, while I was going through it, I didn't realize that I really had an affinity for this area or uh, in this population. Um, and it wasn't until after my divorce was final and I started moving forward and in, 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 in really starting to, to regroup again that I realized that, you know, I really want to help other women that are going through this mm -hmm. and their loved ones and their family. Um, and, and I do see the value of, of what you just said too about the, the friends being real and true and, and honesty. Um, I do think that there's, there, there is something to be said to, for the honesty and positivity that you bring into someone else's life when they're going through these types of things. Um, and thank you so much for sharing that story too. It was, it was, it was, it was 100% yeah, I mean, real. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I related to every second of it. Yeah, but this is why I do what I do. I, I love being able to help women through um, those aha moments. And you do get them as much as it hurts, right? And I know mm -hmm. going through that whole, the whole washing machine thing, it, it must have hurt. It, um, to, to, to at first hear, you know, your friend kind of make yeah. it, but it, then it felt good to hear her come around, you know, um, and it felt good to know that you can do this all by yourself. I think some of the first things that I did by myself as a single woman, again, you know, um, where somebody who does it all the time would think nothing of it, it meant a lot to me, um, uh, mm. able to, um, get my car fixed for, by myself for the first time, you know. That's huge. <laughs> you know, stuff like that is really huge. 
I had, you know, like you said, the, the, the lawn, you know, who was going to mow the lawn, you know, who was going to, and it, when it became me, it was huge. It was a big deal. It was really, really it, a proud moment, you know, in my life. <laughs> I love you, Renee. Let me tell you why. Because I said this on my inspiration in 30, right? Because even though, and, and, and most of the ladies know this, even though uh, we were separated and divorced, I was still codependent because that was my superhero. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to do the car thing, right? Like, and, and it's still a challenge. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have to worry about the oil change doing whatever with the car uh if if I needed to walk somewhere because we we had you know dogs and uh we would share the dogs once a week and I would say you know I went out early in the morning and you know the there was some man standing outside you know that man will be the next day at the house like come on and let's walk just to make sure or give me a taser and something else he gave me, right? Just to make sure I protect myself and, mm -hmm. and did all these things. And I and and I said it has been almost maybe almost three months or two and a half months. And I said, uh, I really need to break this because even though we have our own lives, it was still this thing like I needed my superhero because I didn't want to do all this, right? And so I, I was born January 1st. So when oh. I had to go- Just had a birthday. Yeah, yeah thank you. But when I had to go get my tags and get the, the, the emissions and all this stuff, I was just telling everybody and telling the people, well, this is my first time trying to get- <laughs> <laughs> trying to get this stuff together and you know I need to be able to do this and you know I can and and that was the thing that I was talking about uh to my friend because they were telling me the truth Gloria you gotta be able to let that go to allow somebody to come in mm -hmm. and I would hear it and I understood it but I was like, no, I'm a single woman in the house and this and that, making all these excuses. And, you know, having friends that says, okay, you know, it's cool. But, you know, if you're trying to look for something else, they're not going to tolerate what's going on because they want to be your superhero. Right. So having my friends to constantly let me know look, you saying you want to move on, you're saying you want to do this, you even have a platform, Gloria, where you're telling women to look in the mirror and go ahead and tell themselves that they love themselves and that they can do things for themselves. Girl, look in that mirror. And mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. Right? I did. Mm -hmm. And when I did, and when I sent, when I sent that text, and I was like, this is it. I got to let this go. And it was a lot of words back and forth, but it was for the best. So now I'm in the stage that you talking about where, okay, I got to go get me a car now, right? <laughs> and I'm like, I told the, the told uh, 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 one of my friends who's a guy, you got to come and get a car with me. And I was like, no, I could do it. <laughs> you know, no, I could do it. But Renee, there's always a life after the divorce. There's always a way in which we can bounce back. We did it, right? So that advice for that lady who's going through right now, right? Probably even thinking about it on her end or feel like this is where her life is going, you know? what would you tell her? Because she's listening, mm -hmm. but she's scared. She's not sure if this is a good idea. She knows that she should do something, but don't know what to do. The friends are talking and they're trying to encourage and support and be there. They're frustrated. 
right? <laughs> what would you tell her? I would tell the woman going through this to really take time to pause and to connect with her inner self and her inner being. Um, there comes a time when, when, when you really have to make decisions independent of others um, and really ask yourself, you know, what is the best thing for you? And no one else can make that choice for you. I remember realizing that at, at some point, you know, when I was going through my, my separation, I was separated for quite some time too. And before we divorced, we had two dogs as well, which I was, oh, you made me smile. The same life. <laughs> <laughs> we do lots of parallels, lots of similarities there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, it was, it was interesting. I was at a party and this was not a, a friend of mine, but this was someone who just happened to meet me in this party. And um, she heard me saying that I had to leave the party to go to visit my two dogs. I said, I'm separated, I have to go visit my two dogs. And she said, oh, excuse me. And she said, can I walk you to the door? And I said, yeah, sure. And, you know, I had my purse in my hand over my shoulder and I was just, you know, checking to the door. And she said, she said, I'm divorced too. She said, can I ask you, whose idea was it for you to visit the dogs today? I said, <laughs> and she made me pause, you know, and I had to think for a little while. And I said, I, I, mm -hmm, I, uh, uh, me. <laughs> and she said, yeah, she said, I, I kind of figured that. She said, woman to woman, you're divorcing for a reason. Girl. And you got to make some space. Girl. And, 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 and now is your time to make that space. It, if it's a divorce, if it's a true one, you know, who are you visiting it for? Are you visiting it for yourself or for the dogs? Who are you, you doing? Make this? me holler, girl. You will make me holler. It, it hurt me to the core. I'm going to tell you, yes. when she was talking to me, I was just like, oh. <laughs> you know, it was, but because she, I was like, how dare she just said, no, me, she don't know me. She don't know me. Yeah. But then I knew she was telling the truth. Um, and it was the longest drive to my ex's house. It was something. I cried. Mm -hmm. It was um, it was very, very rough getting through that moment in life. But it was for the best. It was for the best. Um, I called my ex after that visit. I, I called him and I said, I don't, that was my last time coming over to see the dogs. Mm -hmm. I said, really? And I said, and last time I said, you know, I, I feel I need the space, right? So I'm not saying anyone who has a dog should stop just because of the story, but I'm saying that her message to me was that you have got to stop and ask yourself why you are doing things and really question your reasoning, your purpose. Ooh, and girl. that's what she did. That's what that message was to me. She didn't know me. She didn't know me. She didn't know it, my relationship with anyone else, but she felt woman to woman, it was important for me to know that I needed to reassess why I was doing things. Mm. Um, yeah, so I, 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 one, thank you, because um, I won't say that, well, it has been a struggle because, you know, I miss my dogs like crazy, right? Mm. And, and, and the separation, it wasn't ugly, but it was like, okay I need to give this up right uh because I saw him and a person walking my dogs mm -hmm. now did you hear what I said walking my dogs right and I was driving by going to dinner Mm. And I'm being transparent because I'm, I'm, I want you ladies to understand that when you win it, you win it, right? And also to know that the hard decisions that you have to make to allow yourself to start living is so important that you got to hear it. And when I saw that image, Renee, of him, her, and my two dogs, I'm like, hold on. They, they a family. You get it? And I'm, and I'm sitting up there like, the first thing that I think about 
as I said, well, our dogs, they know nothing but love, right? Second thing is they sleep in a bed with us. So where do you think my ego went, Renee? <laughs> I know where your ego went. Wait a minute. I mind with it. Wait a minute. <laughs> so when they get back home and it's time to go to sleep, where are my dogs going? In the bed with who? Nah. You call it what you want, right? And, and and like I told him, he said, you being jealous. I said, no, I'm trying to free you and me because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like finally letting go. And the hurt is because I, I won't be able to see my dogs anymore who I love so much. But that's that's what it is. So the decisions we have to make, ladies, while we're even in it, going through it, getting out of it, trying to live, it is always, it's always going to be surrounded about around you and your decisions. And what you heard tonight was that at the end of the day, your support is there. You have people who love you. You have people who will be there for you, give up their time and everything. But at the end of the day, you have to progress. Yes. You got to get through this. You it is do. up to you, you to can. make the decisions, right? You, can. you have all you need to do it. You know, it's going to hurt and it will hurt. You. We're not, hey, we're not promising it will be easy, no. but you will get through this. And true friends, you know, will and this is now, now me talking to the friend. Yeah. Again, is is know that if you do need to make some breaks and changes in your routine, your routine of being friends or how you how you show friendship, know that if your intentions are good for this person, and you know what that means and what that feels like. If you are doing things from the, from good intentions, and you know what those are, and you know how that feels, then you are okay. You are in the okay zone. Yeah. Um, we only challenge you to be honest and open with that person. And the, and the washing machine story was great because sometimes you do have to break away and, and, and you might have to change your mind, you know, um, don't feel like, oh my goodness, but I said it Sunday was okay, you know, and now yeah. it's not. Well, you can tell that person is, you know, it's, it's not okay anymore. I, I, I need to change my plans and, um, and, 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 come up with another, another solution for you or help you find another solution. And that's okay too. I think openness and honesty is, is going to be key, but intentions are really, really strong and good for the person going through it. Look for ways that your friend can help you progress. Now, my father was very big in helping me progress in my relationship when I was recovering, well, in my time recovering from my divorce. And one of the things that he had me do was, you know, and this was when I honestly, the wounds were real fresh, mm -hmm. <laughs> real fresh wounds. Um, he asked me what was I having for dinner and for my meals, you know, and, and at the time it was me and my, my new place. And I said, you know, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, you know, I was all about fast food because that's really all I needed, you know, so I thought, and he said, but when you bring in that new person in your life, they're going to want a routine. They're not going to want, you know, it's part of building a life with someone is right, having daddy. normalcy. You listen. Yeah. And so, you know, find time, find friends who will give you those types of nuggets that are not just going to give you a pat on the back, um, but seek out the parts where they help you move on and make space for the newness and the freshness in your life. Because I was told, uh, yes, I was. Um, and I felt like, okay, finally, it's all about me. It's, I'm celebrating me. I can do this for me. But, you know, real friends will let you talk and do this, you know, and, and, and get it all out. And that's important. But your, your goal, you know, for that friend should really should be to propel you to the next level. Mm. And if you're not getting that, that's when you need to reevaluate that friendship too, because it rolls both ways, right? Yeah. Um, but look for someone who is going to give you those nuggets that will help pave the way for newness and freshness uh, that you deserve in your life. Mm -hmm. Renee, how can we find you, follow you? What are some of the things you have? Because 
I am sold. I, I done spilled out all my guts to you tonight. I done, and I've enjoyed every second. <laughs> it's been lovely talking with you. Mm -hmm. uh, seriously, I, I really have enjoyed this interview. Thank you. Uh, and I really, really do hope we are making a difference in someone's life. Um, oh, absolutely. And um, yes, you can reach me at dearjohn.com. Um, that's my website where I have support resources for women going through divorces. Uh, the focus is on finding that relaxation and fun um, parts of your life as you as you evolve. Uh, so a lot of the products that you find on my website are actually more things that you would enjoy, like um, perhaps crafting um, and making recipes and things like that. So it's very interactive things that you can do as you recover on your divorce recovery journey. Wow, that is amazing. Please go to her website. Do you have any social media where they can follow you on social media? Yes, uh, I currently we're on Instagram uh, under um, at Dear John Box. And we're also on Facebook uh, at Dear John, um, Dear John, the box. Okay, Dear John, so, the box. Yes, so right. those those are our two places you can find us, and we have a website too, www.dearjohnthebox.com. So please stop by and visit. Yeah, there it is, ladies. Renee, thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Um, this interview has helped me. And I know that it is definitely going to resonate with some of the ladies, you know, in our sisterhood. And I'm just so glad that we were able to have this chat. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you so much for having Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Have a good evening. You too.